This is the Fly Woo Firefly Baby Quad and it's the Analog Bind and Fly Edition. Now, first up, please download the manual. Second up, oops, I just ripped that. The Flight Controller ESC and VTX. I've got the Analog Edition. It does come in a DJI version. We've got props, spare set of props. We've got two battery straps, whole bunch of nuts and bolts, some cable ties, a lens cap, and the quad itself. Now I ordered the version with the prop guards. Thought I ordered the Crossfire version, but it seems I've got the plug and play, which is fine because I was going to pop Express LRS onto this anyway. All the cables are there if you did want to wire that up with SBUS and stuff. And you've got a lead here to put in a naked GoPro. The stack is a 16 by 16 flight controllers, the Goku F411. It's got onboard LED lights, which is pretty cool. The ESC is also 16 by 16. It's four in one with 13 amp continuous current and a peak of 15. It's rated two to four S and comes with BL Heli S. On the digital version, you get a naked or decased Vista with the Nebula Nano camera. Analog version comes with the Goku VTX625, which also has some LEDs. The motors are Flywoo's own Robo 1202.5 5500 kV, and it swings a 40mm prop with a 1.5mm shaft. Comes in at a dry weight of 47 grams, and you can also grab these prop guards for indoor flying and overall general protection. I have this park at the end of my street where I do like to fly a lot of micros. It's very good for anything 3.5 inch and under. It was quite a windy day and the quad itself is not so acrobatic. I did need to be quite high in the throttle range so I'm sitting at about 50% throttle and even when I got into my backyard out of the wind I'm still at 30-40% just to get that moving. To be able to do those acrobatic maneuvers, again, I'm super high on the throttle, just to be able to make sure I can generate the thrust that I need to get through. It's not that the prop guards had really any effect on them, there's minimal effect from those because they're not actually ducks, they're just there as guards, but this is not something I'd recommend go out and buy if you're wanting to try and do freestyle and rip around a local park like I am. It is very much suited to carrying that SMO 4K, the Naked GoPro and Insta360 Go and flying slow and controlled in small spaces. What this would actually benefit from if you are looking to do acrobatic and freestyle maneuvers is to go and buy the 11,000 kV versions of the Robo uh, 1202.5 motors that Fly will also make and fly it on probably 3S. That'll actually produce a lot more thrust and give it a lot more agility. The other thing is going down to 3S is going to free up some weight as well so that's actually going to have more of an impact and you're going to be actually flying a lot more effectively so I'm gonna do that on mine when it comes in one thing this really did struggle with was total moding on grass so I wouldn't recommend that you are gonna to have to walk over and pick it up I'm now going to show you some quick footage of flying a Nebula Nano camera in the same conditions it was on my GEP RC uh, Smart 35 I put the Nebula Nano on that uh, to show you what that camera reproduction is going to look like now Granted that it's not the same quad, but the camera is going to give you an idea of how it's going to fare if you are looking at the DJI version of this. Bear in mind, going to the DJI version is going to add additional weight as well, because a naked Vista is going to be about 10 grams compared to the three or four that this little VTX is. If you're into cinematic FPV and are finding that the two and a half and three inch pusher style micro cine whoop quads are just a little bit too big for some use cases, then surely this is going to be the right tool in those instances. But if you're not, if you're looking to find something that is small to be able to rip around parks, this certainly isn't for you. You do need 4S batteries in order for the 5,500 kV and 40mm prop combination to produce enough thrust. It's certainly not quick and it's designed for the slower, more stable cinematic flights. What I've actually done is I've ordered the 11,000 kV version of these motors and when they arrive over the next week I'm going to put them on and try and fly this on 2 and 3S to see if that makes a difference and provides a more enjoyable experience when flying around a park. Until next time, I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. 
don't forget to send it.